Good morning, everybody. Uh, I, I would like to start my presentation by uh, thanking uh, in, uh, Leipzig Universitat for uh, supporting uh, our visit to, uh, to here to, to attend the very important conference for me, at least. Uh, we, uh, I'm going. I'm going to uh, to talk about uh, uh, the Adab Magazine Archives, digitization, preservation, and access. But before, I want to uh, to uh, give a brief uh, information about uh, my university, uh, American University of Beirut University. Uh, it is uh, one of the oldest uh, university in the Middle East. Uh, it was founded in 1866. And uh, uh, the university libraries, which is uh, 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 founded in, in 1953, uh, actually we have four uh, libraries, the main libraries, Jaffet, uh, the main library is Jaffet uh, Memorial Library, the branch libraries, medical library, sub medical library, uh, agricultural and uh, science library, and architecture and engineering library. <coughs> uh, the university libraries, AUB university libraries are leading different digitization initiatives in attempt to preserve national and AUB cultural heritage. In addition to disseminate information and promote knowledge by allowing access to AUB community, to scholars, to researchers, and to the largest possible audience. Uh, we have more than one digitization in initiative uh, currently. We have the first one is Arabic Collection Online. Uh, this is a project uh, uh, with partnership of New York University, New York, and uh, funded by the American University of Dubai, uh, with the partnership of uh, five, uh, uh, six uh, univer uh, university libraries, Princeton, Cornell, Columbia, and American University of Cairo. Uh, <clears throat> this pro uh, the uh, this Arabic collection online uh, consists of enable uh, on open access uh, all the Arabic uh, books, printed books, uh, online at the platform of uh, uh, New York University op on our open access basis. <coughs> uh, the task of uh, uh, American University of Beirut Library is digitized and uh, creating the metadata in uh, Mark XML and send them through uh, Bagot uh, uh, software. <coughs> the second uh, digital initiative is the Palestinian Oral History Archives, which is an archival collection that contains uh, more than 1,000 hours of testimonies with first generation Palestinian and other Palestinian community in Lebanon. The project will digitize, index, catalog, preserve, and provide access to the material through the creation of a digital platform. It aims at, uh, to expand and include additional oral history collection, documenting various aspects of Palestinian experience in Lebanon and, and the region. The project is being completed by AUB Libraries in partnership with the Isam Fares Institute for Public Policy and International Affairs at AUB, the Nakba Archive, and the Arab Resource Center for Popular Arts. Nakba Archive provides the library with the uh, audio recording and video recording concerning the, uh, the, mig uh, the forced uh, migration of the Palestinians from Palestine to Lebanon. And the JANA, uh, Center for Cop uh, Popular Art, provides the library with the uh, folk tales of Pal Palestinian folk tales. At the end uh, of this project, we have to create a platform for research uh, uh, with the uh, Thedores or uh, ontology uh, in uh, English and in Arabic. 
the third uh, digitization initiative it's not really for the time being a initiative uh, digitization initiative uh, at, the, at the time being it is only indexing uh, the <laughs> Nahda journal Nahda means Arabic Renaissance uh, with the Brill publishers. Uh, the Nahda journals uh, dated uh, from 1890 till uh, 1950 will be uh, uh, part of the Islamic uh, Islamicos uh, index Islamicos platform uh, at Brill uh, platform. Digitizing the Arab magazine archives. We are uh, mainly we are focused on uh, this uh, project because it is not only digitization; it is uh, uh, a uh, encapsulation. It's also adding ac access and archiving. The Arab magazine and the AUB libraries agreed. Uh, in, 19, in 2014 to digitize OCR catalog and index the entire magazine at the article level. Uh, Adab magazine will publish the digitized uh, content through their own uh, content management system, Drupal. AUB will keep a preservation copy of the entire magazine issues and will provide the AUB community at the intranet uh, level uh, to access to digitized content through a full text search web interface. Uh, why uh, Adab Magazine? Uh, Adab Magazine is a literary and cultural journal established in 1953 by Dr. Suhail Dries, focused on movements in literature and culture in the Arab world, mainly <coughs> the, the new movement at that time uh, existentialist, structuralism, and Marxism. Uh, it includes uh, pot political thought, poetry, uh, novels, short stories, movies, criticism, drama, and general culture. Uh, Al Adab magazine considered as Arab cultural platform, despite the Arab state's censorship at that time, and still, <laughs> Adab magazine stopped publishing. In the print in 2012, accumulating an archive of 60 volumes over six years. In October 2015, Al Adab magazine started republishing online only. This is the first, as a cover of the first issue of Al Adab in uh, January uh, uh, 1953. Uh, uh, the, uh, in uh, the lifetime of the uh, magazine, the title uh, changed from Al Adab, Majalla Shahriya Tuana Bishoon Al Fikr, Al Adab, Majalla Thaqafiya Arabiya, and lately Al Adab. Uh, it was issued uh, on a monthly basis from 1953 to 1980, and five times a year from 80 to 2011 and four times a year in 2012. It stopped uh, at the end of uh, the autumn 2012. Elika uh, Hali, uh, my colleague, will continue about the digitization and OCR. Good morning, everyone. And again, thank you for having us uh, here. This will uh, allow us to present our work and probably give us uh, probably possibilities and room to collaborate if anybody is interested in what we are doing, and this will be helpful for you or later on. Also, we can benefit from your expertise to enhance of what you are doing. Uh, as uh, Basma just mentioned about the importance of Al Adab magazine, about 60 volumes of uh, uh, Arabic text uh, in different areas. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the process uh, that we took to digitize and then later on to OCR this information. Definitely, as you know, uh, digitization is two parts, is for preservation and for access. And you know the importance of uh, preservation. And yesterday it was mentioned, uh, uh, we have some of the magazine in the library that already torn out. We have lost paper, we have lost covers. So um, this is one way to preserve actually the, the, the uh, original uh, magazine. But also we need to digitally preserve 
the created file. And for the time being, uh, we did our initial step after doing the scanning and everything is we put everything in a baguette using LC baguette of Library of Congress. And we have different copies on sand and tapes. Uh, and then the, our next step will be to ingest them into uh, an open archival information system. We'll be using Archive Medical. It's an open source uh, uh, digital preservation system. In Archive Medical 1.4, fields in the baguette.txt uh, file index as source metadata and the Archive Medical Meds file. This will help the, help the uh, DBACs to be searchable and to be able to retrieve them later on. We're going to adopt this system actually not only for ADAPT, but for all our digital content that we are working on. Unfortunately, in AUB and probably in most of the region and mainly in Lebanon, uh, very little, few institutions, if none, uh, have digital preservation systems. So we start working on this. And of course, we the digitization for access. So after all, uh, preservation is after all to be able to access this material long after a uh, long time. Uh, and what, what, what was nice about it is not only we, we digitize to so use it to be able to view and read them, also we noticed when we digitize, we digitize this item, this helped the cataloger later on you will see, to actually uh, catalog and metadata the information. So they didn't have to get the 60 volumes of book, they only have to look at the digital images and to be able to catalog. And this helped us also in case uh, an error happened during the digitization to be, to be captured. Uh, prior to, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, some of the, of the volume were torn out or they were missing information. So we had to uh, make sure at least to have two copies of each one. We tried to go back to the, to the owner to see if there's uh, copies. We also had two copies in AUB and we noticed that a lot of, uh, they were not complete. So we had to scan from each copy the, the missing information. And we'll see later on something uh, very strange that we discovered that after scanning and we went off scanning several volumes, we discovered that even in the same year, there are different volumes. The one that the owner has is different than the one that the UB they have. And all the number of pages were different. It, it was weird. Then we discovered it's all about censorship. So because this pub uh, was published, for example, in Iraq, they have some article removed uh, from the one published in Lebanon. So we faced this, this issue and we tried to find a solution for this. At the end, we have all the volume complete. However, we still have some missing cover. It's not important. There are that are artistic uh, covers. Uh, we had a workflow. I'm not going to do in, into the workflow, but this I want to stress on a, on a point. Uh, as you can see, it, I'm not sure if it's clear, but uh, in each uh, activity, we have a specific task to do. So we have the image capture phase, we have the image processing phase, we have the OCR phase, and, we, and after each activity, we have definitely the quality checks to make sure everything is proper. However, we have the, the one, the, the red line, the dotted red line, the critical path where um, if an error occurred at the beginning of the cycle and nobody noticed it, for example, a single missing page while we are scanning, for example, and sometimes yesterday I mentioned it's, uh, it's uh, uh, the word was uh, fairly easy to find, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but something like this, fairly easy to find high quality images. It's true, but even though it's not that easy, because sometimes if you, uh, relatively easy, it was said. So if you have, for example, a missing page and after it went all the cycles, then you have to repeat all the work, and this is resource consumption. So this is for us, plan well before you start the project. Even if you do a lot of planning, you'll still have problem, and you have to cater for the resources later on. Uh, you know, for the digitization, we use some flatbed scanner and some book scanner for this, to be able to cater for the quality of the books uh, we had. Some of them were better scanned to better get an image on a flatbed, and some of them for a book eye scanner. Uh, sorry, planetary scanner. Uh, after all, we, we scanned the covers, everything that has color in it, in uh, color, 24, the 300 dpi, 24 bit, and all the text was done uh, black and white. So now we have the images, we want to also use them. After all, after having the images, it's, it's, uh, it's not very beneficial for the scholar of academic. They want to go to the content and to be able to locate articles about uh, specific people. Uh, definitely, when OCR, you can index and you can edit, but our uh, our objective about OCR is to be able to do full text search. So we used Sakhir at that point to OCR because we find it was easy uh, to manipulate the GUI interface they are providing, so where we can teach it at the character level. 
uh, and it was giving a good result specifically for, uh, specifically for the uh, for the one published uh, recently and after 1990s and even 1980s till 2012. Uh, it varied the OCR from 84% to 99%, and we're going to see uh, why we have this variance. Uh, as you can see, in 1950s, we have the lowest accuracy because of when we're going to see some example of the images, the font was not too clear, and actually we have multiple fonts on the same page. However, at the, uh, at after 1980s and even 1970s, we have a good accuracy. The accuracy is somehow low because sometimes one volume is not good in the, the decade, so the whole decades, uh, 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 we have a lower accuracy for the whole decade. So as you know, the the, the character in the uh, Arabic letter varies in its location inside the world. So for example, the Aleph at the start, uh, in the middle, at the end varies. The first character on the top. So we discovered that for the same year, and actually for the same issue, that is sometimes in the same months, we have different fonts used on the same, uh, it's not, we're not talking about the font of the title. I mean, in the text, in the same line sometimes, we have a different fonts. So this is uh, added complication to the OCR. And definitely because we OCR and bitonal, we had to uh, improve the images quality by removing uh, the noise generated by the different dots, because in Arabic, a dot could change uh, the letter by itself. So all of this uh, added some difficulties, uh, so we, we have to deal with to improve our OCR. For example, this is one page in the volume 2, year 1954. I'm not sure if you can see, but at least the size of the font, for example, in the lower page, is different from the right upper uh, of the page. Uh, this is in the same, in the same, uh, in the same page, even same character. As you can see, for example, the different fonts for the same character, so up to the left, you can see the first letter is calf, calf. And down, you can see it, it's the same calf, but it's written differently. And it, we have a third uh, syntax over it also at the bottom, to the right. So you can see the calf is written three to four times in the same paragraph and in the same page. So I, we weren't sure how the OCR will be able to recognize that this is, this is the same calf. We tried to teach the OCR. This is how we did increase the accuracy, but for, uh, for the for the old volume with very low quality, this was a problem. This is how you can see the difference between the new volume in 2005 and the old volume in 1954. You can see 2005 is the well structured and you have the fonts in better shape. Um, this is a, not a mass digitization project, it's a limited project, 60 years, 60 volume, 50,000 page of images. We didn't go to uh, uh, source crowding, crowdsourcing. Uh, we actually used metadata, and this is how we were able to enhance the search results. Uh, I will let Basma to talk a little bit about metadata. Uh, cataloging terms uh, means uh, descriptive, catalog, uh, descriptive metadata for books. And indexing is also the, the term used for uh, uh, processing of a book uh, as a descriptive metadata. Uh, for uh, the digital object, we use the term metadata to uh, to, to search to uh, create uh, uh, documents or index about the author, title, pages, and sources and subjects uh, using bibliography format citation. As for the indexing. It's the subject cataloging of the description of subject on of the uh, articles. Uh, we, we use the subject headings or controlled vocabulary. This cataloging process is called descriptive metadata for digital objects. Uh, cataloging tools. We use uh, uh, cataloging uh, uh, hierarchical multi-level cataloging, uh, magazine top level, issue level and article level. Uh, we found that uh, use, the use of a library system, Millennium library system, uh, the module of cataloging in this uh, library system, is very useful for analytical cataloging. And we use the Anglo-American uh, Anglo cataloging rules, uh, AACR2, and the uh, Library of Congress authorities, 
because we, we have to keep consistency of the name of authors and name of organization. Now we use the uh, Arabic language for cataloging and indexing and the Mark 21 format. Uh, which uh, is able to, to be converted later to a, a real descriptive metadata uh, like Dublin Core or uh, uh, any other uh, uh, schema. As for the indexing uh, tools, we use the uh, Library of Congress subject headings translated into Arabic by the university libraries. Uh, we use the detailed indexing in Arabic to, from 2 to 70 subject headings to compensate any uh, OCR uh, mistakes, uh, mainly for the conference and uh, the uh, meeting paper. We, uh, uh, we, we can search uh, the, uh, the indexing and the metadata in the library system, the Millennium Library System. And at the same time, uh, we can use the content management system XDF extensible uh, file, uh, the text file uh, of the AUB library, which enable the full text search. Uh, we can export the uh, metadata to Dublin Core as uh, 15 elements, Dublin Core, the simple one, and uh, to mark exchange format ISO 2709 and mark 21 standard and CSV comma separated value. As, uh, the fields uh, of exported uh, file are a system record number as unique identifier, title of the article, the main author, the added author, the pages, a source that includes the title of magazine at that time, uh, volume number, issue number, date, URL, we, we, we try to, to use uh, the structure, structural metadata for uh, the URL. You can see uh, this is the URL. Is it clear? Uh, uh, the first part of the URL is al adab and the, after the, the year, the volume, uh, the uh, issues, for example, 01202, because five uh, times a year. And at the end, four uh, digits for the, for the pages. And for the, uh, we, uh, we use uh, uh, FR1 front cover for, uh, only for the cover after the pages. Uh, we also uh, uh, export the rubric or the category, category of the subject as categorized by the uh, magazine called Abuab al Majalla. And the subject, as I told you, to, from two to 70 subjects for each article, as in uh, pre coordinated vocabularies. We export also the personalities, the personal names as subject. It's an example of the subject headings, pre-coordinated subject heading. Uh, we can, uh, <clears throat> for example, the first line, Arrasamun, España, Mukabalat, painters, Spain, interviews. And second one, Syria, intellectual life, 20th uh, 20 century. And uh, add one, two, three, four. In the fifth uh, line, al Baal Baki Munir, 1980, 1999, uh, and his book, Philosophy from China. As for the personal author as subject and as uh, subject or uh, author, we, uh, we use the qualifier, for example, the date of uh, birth and date of uh, death for the author that having the same name. For example, Corm George, and Corm George, the first one uh, died in 1971, the other one is still alive. Uh, we need, after exporting the, this field, we have to map the information to the content management system. Uh, we can, uh, uh, the metadata could be mapped to uh, 
uh, from the mark file such as Drupal, uh, WordPress, and DSpace. And the uh, keyword uh, could also be tagged in the content management system Fedoras or taxonomy or ontology or control vocabulary. A full text can also be mapped and include in the content management system. The full, ta uh, full text could be indexed and retrieved due to, uh, to OCR techniques that transform Arabic image the text into searchable text. The search engine, Solar in CMS, can retrieve full text and metadata in simple search and advanced search. Uh, full text search, uh, we upload all the information such as image, text, metadata into the full text searchable system. Uh, and we provide a web interface that allows access to the digitized magazine. In, in addition, we provide a viewer uh, reader uh, uh, feature. The content management system, XTF, it is a powered open source platform for providing access to digital content. It was developed by uh, and maintained by the California Digital Library. It's able to create index on, man, on any XML elements or attribute. The entire presentation layer is customizable via XL uh, XSLT transform. Uh, X, uh, XTF provides out of the box support for the following type of documents uh, Microsoft Word, PDF, web pages, HTML, HTM, XML, encoded plain text, uh, scanned books from Internet Archives, and Hathi Trust. Uh, uh, the content management system is based on Lucene and Solar, uh, open free of software that provide full text indexing and search. The major out of the box feature is the user interface with the uh, search, browse, and uh, document viewer. Now, the challenges. Ellie will talk about them. We mentioned some of the challenges, for example, the censorship in some Arab countries uh, and uh, the problem of uh, finding a complete edition uh, without missing issue. And of course, the number of pages varies according to the omission of article in the censored edition. So this had uh, uh, required from us to do an extra work. And definitely the, the frequency of publication changed throughout time. Also, this has created uh, problem changing in the rubrics, additional citation for the co continuation at the format, and combining the PDF files in one link, and add more subject heading to, comp to compensate in case of beta OCR, especially, especially for the early uh, publication year. Uh, other challenges is the quality of the paper. Uh, they were too tight uh, sometimes while scanning, uh, missing covers we talked about, and the quality, printing quality varies. Uh, what it was initially printed. Um, actually, also, we had a problem with the images in uh, black and white. They were not good. So an image capture phase, we have also to go and rescan sometimes in grayscale and incorporate the images into the original uh, files. And some of the problems of Arabic uh, OCR is the cursive language where letters are attached, and each letter changed according to its uh, position in the word. The overlap, we're going to see an example uh, how the letters are overlapped. The different types and size, we talked about this. The, the, the data print is in calligraphic fonts. Accuracy rate of recognition was, uh, was calculated at the font level because we were teaching the OCR at the font level also. Uh, this is how Sakhar uh, uh, Automatic Reader helped us to uh, increase the OCR. Some characters have the same form and are only distinguished by the position of various dots. And this is uh, the form of the noise that was generated by the by tonal images. Space between two connecting Arabic letters. We're going to see an example. It's called Kashida. And the vowels are different from the tactic marks or short vowels. Example, Fatha, Damna, and we can see some example. For example, uh, if it's clear, you can see some of the letters that are overlapping. Uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, if you look, uh, can you see the mouse over here, for example? The, the H with the M, two letters, they are overla overlaying one the other. 
or you see, over here you can see three letters, lam, mim, jin, and instead of having them one uh, uh, along the each, each other one, they, they are uh, uh, like one characters. And here we have the kashida, if you can see, and this is also a great problem with OCR. <coughs> this is probably a better example of how you can see lam, mim, jin. Uh, this is the last cover that was published before seizing uh, publishing a print copy of uh, of Al-Adab. It was in uh, 2012. Uh, we will have a quick demo about the thing that we have built. Uh, unfortunately, it's, in, uh, it's on the internet, so we we'll just want to have to see some screenshot. Uh, <laughs> So this is the main page. Where you have the the keyword search feature, and then you have the the browse the browse all feature over here. And we have the they have the advanced search. So if we if we if we click in, on the browse all, it will just uh, list All the, the articles that we have deployed so far on the system. And as you can see, we have uh, till now deployed 11,000 uh, 11, items till now. And these are the subjects, different subject headings. We can uh, extend this information. And in here, we have the information regarding each article. Then, if we filter by specific story, for example, we want only the stories. You will have the, the tags. So in here we are putting only uh, filtering for al qissa al-Arabiya, Arabic stories, short Arabic stories. And then uh, also we can uh, have a keyword search. So for example, I'm searching for Beirut. And as you can see, all the articles that have Beirut in the title or in the subject or in the text, it returns the results. And then I can yeah. And as you can see, if I want to read the article and it highlights uh, the word in the text. And we have the advanced search feature. If you want to remove the knowledge, for example, you want to search for Beirut only in, in the title and not even in the full text or uh, another field. So you will have only the result in the titles. So the articles will uh, with this one, the titles. Uh, mainly, this is it. I just want to add one more thing uh, about uh, possible. You know, some of the challenges that we might face in the future is sustainability. Okay, we build the system, how are we going to sustain it? Uh, after, I'm not talking about one or two years, after 10 years, what shall we do? Uh, if the administration changes, they have uh, new strategic goals, how we should uh, deal with such initiative? Uh, probably we have uh, to have a global uh, consortium or uh, organization that helps to uh, uh, take care of this system. Another thing is about infrastructure. Uh, it would be much easier if we get the right infrastructure at the right time to be able to quickly uh, deploy and uh, perform our work. And definitely we have the problem of copyright and uh, copyright issue. And we definitely need uh, laws and new legislation, in, in, at least in, in our country, to, to make things easier in this regard. So we can, for example, add more periodical. For example, we have to have an agreement with the Al-Adab to be able to have this information uh, available. And I see other possibility. Uh, for example, uh, we can still enhance the OCR. And now that you have work on this project, you have like a library of fonts that we can reuse in other projects that have the similar fonts. So no need to redo the same work. And even I, I, I found other open source that we can, we can also, excuse me. 
There are other open source that can we can use where now the font is only user is only usable with a software software. So we should be able to have a font that is usable on open source software. Uh, and there are a lot of things that are being done now, like uh, Osiropus, Kazakh, and even in here uh, and Live like Kraken and other software. So we should invest in this software more and whatever we do as models of font to be able to be usable by others and vice versa, not to repeat uh, always the same work. And finally, uh, what will help uh, also is uh, now that we have, you know, yesterday it was it was uh, mentioned that everybody brag about his collection or digital collection. Maybe it's true, but help us to know what are the tools that we need to build now. Now, for example, we have this 60, 60 years of how the short stories were, were varied in the Arabic world, how censorship was, etc. So now we have this information. What are the scholar tools that help a researcher, scholar, student advance in their work? And these ideas and collaboration will help us integrate them in, in, our, in our system or the system that we want to build. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, very interesting. I see three questions. I will take the first one. <laughs> I will leave. Uh, I see your concern, and actually, we have also the same concern, actually, and we started some sub-initiative. Uh, I will let Basma talk more about. Uh, regarding the OCR, we already contacted Maxime from here. Uh, when we started this project, it was like two, three years ago, and we started planning, so we didn't have a lot of options. We looked at the Zerac but it was not easy to train and to have some student go and try to use it. And even though we, didn't, we weren't satisfied by the output where, where Sakhar uh, allowed us to have the high accuracy. Uh, and hopefully we'll have more collaboration uh, with, with Leipzig University and we, we're ready also. We have other projects. We have, for example, the ACO project where we're uh, digitizing thousands of Arabic books and they will be available online. But without OCR, as you mentioned, you, you will not have access to the full text and this is uh, some, somewhere we can collaborate to improve this. So we're working, and the way we build the system, as, as you can notice, uh, we can take any component, enhance it, and then put everything together. So this is, this is what's good about it. And we have every, the, the authentic document that only will be digitally preserved, so uh, if someone wants to actually, the artifact, we can give him the original image with all the, the information needed. And we hope to give also the full text search with increased OCRs up to 99% if possible for all uh, documents we are using. If this is feasible, that would be great. In addition to other tools that might be of benefit for you. I know there's other important problem I will let Basma answer because it uh, should be more of a help. Uh, for the Arabic translation of uh, subject headings, or Library of Congress subject headings, uh, this is an uh, accumulation of uh, 30 years of indexing uh, using the Library of Congress subject headings in the library. So we have uh, always the equivalent in, in, uh, of English and Arabic, exactly the same pre-coordinated uh, form. And this is only for the library, but it, it was useful to use it in uh, Adab uh, to reduce the noise of, in the retriever. Uh, as for the other project, I mean, for the Palestinian oral history, for example, we are creating now a new anthology or Thedoris, structure of the Thedoris that could be later uh, uh, converted to an ontology according to SCOS and uh, ISO uh, 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 standard. As for the Anahda, uh, we are going to create our own terms of Anahda because there's no uh, ready already uh, uh, vocabularies for Anahda or the Arabic Renaissance. Uh, so we are in the process of creating it. And I think uh, Brill will uh, benefit. Yes, he will. Uh, uh, they are going to benefit from it. But it will be for the uh, whole community of Arabic speaking uh, and even for the uh, non-Arabic speaking uh, users because it will be bilingual. And one more thing is, uh, we also, I mentioned the infrastructure, if we have like all the needed resources, we can definitely start, uh, and the copyright issue, we can start uh, digitizing more, we are ready to digitize more, all this uh, material, Arabic uh, periodicals, along with what they are working in another project and have them accessible if possible uh, to you. Thank you. Thank you.